Having introduced the magnetic domains, and uh, we have seen that the uh, motivation to keep the alignment of the magnetic moments to be parallel was exchange energy, a natural question uh, that would come up is if the parallel alignment of moments minimizes exchange energy, shouldn't we expect alignment throughout the whole volume so there should be a single domain structure? So there shouldn't be any domain, so it should all be aligned in the same direction. So this is the question that we would like to answer. So if parallel alignment of moments minimizes exchange energy then shouldn't we expect alignment throughout the whole volume That is to say, uh, there shouldn't be any domains, so it should all be aligned in the same direction. Now, we have Landau and Lifshitz in 1935 gave an explanation uh, for the existence of domains. Basically, Landau and Lifshitz argued that the existence of domains is a consequence of energy minimization. So they showed that the existence of domains is a consequence of energy minimization okay so how so which energy term are we minimizing uh, so the energy term that I will introduce and that is the one we're trying to minimize by forming domains is the magnetostatic energy so a single domain specimen reduces its so-called magnetostatic energy by breaking up into domains and this is at the expense of forming boundaries between domains that we call domain walls okay so let's talk about magnetostatic energy of a single domain so what is the magneto static energy of a single domain so let's start with magnetostatic energy of a single moment in a magnetic field H so um, magnetostatic energy of 
the single moment atomic moment m in a field h so what is this well it's the basically the energy of a magnetic moment inside the magnetic field that is uh, if we call this e uh, e it's minus mu zero using si units magnetic moment dot product with the magnetic field h uh, or we can say de infinitesimal form would be minus mu zero h dot dm where dm is the uh, magnetic moment uh, inside uh, uh, a small magnetic moment which is the magnetic moment of an atom let's say so uh, if we do this uh, for the uh, full sample then we can talk about the energy per unit volume so uh, let's talk about magnetostatic energy of the specimen per unit volume so it's the energy density now the way to calculate this would be uh, you would write the energy is equal to if it's a single domain minus mu zero integral h dot dm where m is the magnetization because we're talking about energy per volume uh, so here the magnetic field that we're talking about is not the applied field it's the demagnetizing field which is given in si units as demagnetizing factor times the magnetization so this is the demagnetizing field so if we perform this integral for a single domain this would become the energy density energy per volume is um, mu zero because we have minus the magnetizing field times uh, magnetization and another minus sign here it becomes plus mu zero demagnetizing factor integral volume integral m dot dm and this is going to give us uh, mu zero demagnetizing field m squared divided by 2 so this m uh, is going to be the saturation magnetization because it's the value of m inside the uh, domain so we find that the energy density is given by mu zero demagnetizing factor ms squared divided by 2 so this is the answer we're looking for so how do we reduce uh, the uh, magnetization throughout the sample so uh, throughout the sample throughout the specimen this is not for the single domain now we want to reduce the magnetization uh, m is reduced by introduction of domains so we have and actually in the demagnetized state m becomes zero for the specimen so we have uh, domains that are reducing m and therefore the demagnetizing field is also reduced um, now it becomes favorable to form domains in order to reduce the magnetization however we have a limitation on the size of the domains uh, we cannot form infinite number of domains the size of uh, the domains is determined by the domain wall energy so it will have an energy cost to form domain wall so we have to uh, look at the energy cost uh, for forming domains so uh, we can summarize the consequences of domain formation in terms of energy as follows when we form domains inside a ferromagnetic material or a ferrimagnetic material 
or an anti antiferromagnetic material. So here are the three important energy terms. Magnetostatic energy, that is the one we're trying to minimize to reduce the magnetizing field and the overall magnetization. This is going to be reduced. Exchange energy, however, is increasing. Exchange energy favors single domain structure, the parallel alignment of moments. So this energy term will increase. On the other hand, because we are introducing domain walls, domain wall energy will increase. We will talk about domain walls in more detail uh, later on. So we have to consider these three consequences in uh, trying to understand why the domains form. So let's look at a cubic crystal. Now, in the first uh, scenario, I have them all uh, in a single domain. So I have three north poles on top and three south poles at the bottom. And there will be field lines from uh, north pole to south pole. So these will be free, uh, field lines coming out. And um, I have the magnetization, uh, the saturation magnetization pointing from south to north and the demagnetizing field, which is minus demagnetizing factor times m, has a smaller magnitude, but it points from north to south. So this has a magnetostatic energy. Now, one way to reduce this magnetostatic energy is by introducing uh, this domain wall and here you can see that uh, I have um, the magnetization uh, pointing from um, south to north here and the demagnetizing field uh, is pointing from uh, north to south so this is not right And you can see that uh, this is going to reduce the demagnetizing field and magnetization of the overall specimen. However, uh, I still have a demagnetizing field that is pointing from these uh, three poles, north poles to the south poles here. So um, here is a demagnetizing field. Here is a demagnetizing field. So the fact that I have these uh, free poles here cre cre creating this demagnetizing field is uh, problematic for magnetostatic energy. Now, in order to reduce this situation, I can introduce uh, more domain walls. So here is uh, three domain walls. So that is breaking the specimen into four domains. Now you can see that the magnetization it averages out to zero here. However, I have a demagnetizing fields uh, pointing from uh, north to south, north to south here, uh, north to south, north to south, north to south here, etc. So these demagnetizing fields are not exactly canceling each other. So therefore, uh, I have a magnetostatic energy. So what I would like to do is basically to get rid of all of my uh, free poles and uh, <clears throat> something I can do that is uh, a much better scenario is to form closure domains. In the closure domains, you can see that the magnetization is rotating, in this case in the clockwise direction. However, the free poles are forming on the uh, domain wall boundaries. So you can see that I have the formation of these free poles and that will cause uh, demagnetizing uh, fields as well. So here in the fourth scenario, I introduce lots of domain walls and therefore I reduce the formation of um, free poles. But however, as I do this, the domain wall energy is increasing. So if I go in this direction uh, from the left to the right, I can see that um, in this direction, domain wall energy is increasing. Uh, 
uh, but if I look at the magnetostatic energy in this direction, magnetostatic energy on the other hand is decreasing. So magnetostatic energy is decreasing by the introduction of domains. So uh, the end uh, of the story is the following. Uh, to reduce the magnetostatic energy we need a domain pattern. So uh, what would be the best domain pattern you can think of that would reduce magnetostatic energy exactly to zero? That would be uh, basically what you see in a Roland ring. So it's a completely uh, circulating uh, magnetization th that does not have any uh, free poles. So it's a uh, the closure domain is as close as you can get to this, but if you have a vortex structure, basically that will be uh, taking care of the uh, free poles and reducing the magnetostatic energy exactly to zero. Okay, so uh, we address the question of why we should talk about domains, uh, because the parallel alignment of the magnetic moments is uh, motivated by minimization of exchange energy uh, so we would normally expect that the magnetic moments should be aligned throughout the specimen with a single domain structure but Landau Lifshitz in 1935 argued that this is not true because of the minimization requirement on the magnetostatic energy however uh, the, that comes at the cost of uh, forming domain walls and increasing domain wall energy so magnetostatic energy of a single domain uh, can be found by integrating my minus mu zero demagnetizing field dot product with the uh, magnetic uh, magnetization DM, D, DM. And we find that this energy density is mu zero and DMS squared uh, divided by two. So this would be uh, joules per meter cube in SI units. Now throughout the specimen, the magnetization, the overall magnetization can be reduced by introduction of domains. However, <clears throat> the domains cannot be infinite. The size of the domains will be determined by the requirement to minimize domain wall energy. So we form domains uh, to decrease magnetostatic energy, but that comes at the cost of exchange energy and domain wall energy. So it's an interplay between different energy terms. And one good example is to look at a specimen that has a cubic anisotropy, for example. You can see in the single domain case, the magnetostatic energy is maximized. If you form closure domains with lots of domain walls in between, the magnetostatic energy is reduced. And actually, the best scenario is to have a vortex structure. However, uh, the, the introduction of these domain walls is increasing the domain wall energy. So therefore, we have to find a balance between minimizing magnetostatic energy and domain wall energy.